But in a situation where you find that they look like the same it's not necessarily uh, tribal or regional. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, it's Daybreak on Trust Television. And we would have a little switch um, in the flow of our programming. We will be bringing you the newspaper review this time, uh, where we technically buy time for our guests, who somehow, against the flow of uh, event lately, has been trapped uh, in traffic. You know, since this fall, um, what would you call it, the removal of first subsidies, the roads in Abuja have become freer and uh, a sweeter to drive on. But somehow it's like people are ramping up capacity and more cars are returning to the mm. road. Um, uh, rather than keep you bored, we will switch events. And uh, thankfully, our reviewer is in the studio. We start, as usual, with the Daily Trust. Uh, the Daily Trust is the one headliner for us this morning. Lack of funds stall 16 trillion railway projects across Nigeria. Uh, the Daily Trust today is chronicling all of the railway projects that have been commenced, those that were promised to change uh, the paradigm in Nigeria. We have only succeeded in um, completing the Lagos Ibadan axis and the standard gauge. Um, the Kanu Kaduna is uh, at a different level of completion, and then, of course, Abuja Kaduna. There are several others coming up on stream. And um, we hope that we are able to find this fund, which is practically about the size of our national budget, mm. uh, to make this happen. But it has the capacity to completely transform our landscape. We don't need to raise the money. I think that's what the experts are saying. Uh, if we're able to share a good business case, private investors can take up these slots, build, operate, and transfer in right. the future. What we want is quality uh, living standards for Nigeria. That's it on the front page of the Daily Trust. Well, right, let's turn our attention now to the front page of the People's Daily. There's a lot more uh, stories to cover. Governor Buni bans use of government vehicles, facilities for personal reasons. Listen, good luck with that, because uh, I know it's not going to change much. Uh, unfortunately, we've um, allowed this culture to perpetually uh, define activities of people in power, where you see government vehicles taking uh, the wards of the person who is privileged to use that vehicle as a director, as a commissioner, as a minister, whatever it is. And uh, you see those uh, public workers serving personal, um, you know, jobs or working or over time, uh, you know, in the interest of their bosses. And more, more often than not, they're not actually getting paid extra for that. But um, I suppose Governor Buni in Yobe State is um, trying to change that situation. If you want to take a look at the story, it's available on page five. Kogi Guba, court orders DSS police to protect ADC candidate from arrest by Governor Bello. Uh, the plot continues to thicken ahead of uh, the November 11th election in Kogi and uh, it's one of those bad examples about how not to play politics in Nigeria. Subsidy removal, reps lambast NLC over claims on palliatives to lawmakers. Well, how about you become transparent then and tell Nigerians uh, how much uh, you got as part of an intervention since coming on board? Because I dare say that uh, the disparity is obvious, the gap is there, and uh, the excuse that some of the lawmakers keep giving is that they also use some of those monies they get as part of their allowances to take care of their constituents. But that in itself is making the case uh, for the NLC where they are saying that, listen, the people that are representing us are actually eating fat on the public purse. The same money that the government is saying is not available to take care of everybody is available to take care of the 0.9% uh, who are running the show at the top level. So, um, yeah, this is the reaction of uh, the House of Representatives uh, with regards to the NLC's threat of a of an indefinite strike action uh, in the weeks to come. Okay, uh, I don't know what this photo op is regarding, but it was an event here in Abuja. And uh, you might want to take a look at uh, the pages of the People's Daily to just follow up on that. It is definitely something security uh, related. So representatives of uh, the High Commission of Nigeria and National Center Agency uh, 
at an event uh, in Abuja. In other news, Naira falls to 930 Naira to the dollar at Paro market as BDCs lament dollar scarcity. And diesel supply, Ipman urges Saludo to pay 900 million Naira debt. Is it the same Saludo from uh, Governor of Anambra State? Yes, but it's um, it's a legacy debt, I guess, from <laughs> a legacy of, debt. Uh, street lights. Yes. <laughs> right, okay. Awarded by the last uh, mm. governor. Oh, okay. How? Oh, <laughs> actually missed him in, in the public eye since his uh, you know, infamous arrest at the Lagos airport. Don't mm. know how that is going for him anyway. Uh, CBN denies policy to crash exchange rate to one naira 25 koba so uh, they're scrambling on social media <laughs> trying to uh, i mean nobody nobody is, is, is you know foolish enough to actually believe in in the first place but um, would it would be nice if that happens you can't will it into reality yeah but it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know it's just wishful thinking I mean. uh, at this point really federal government flag, flags of freight services on apapa ibadan cargo rail lagos canal to begin soon Kano uh, Kwara government rather evacuates street beggars from Ilorin metropolis. That is it on the front page of the People's Daily. I think the most sustainable way of evacuation is to actually create jobs for people yeah. and get them engaged rather than just mobilize, mm. move them away, and in a matter of weeks, they find their way yeah. back. This time, even more uh, reinforced. Yeah. And we'll move on straight to the Vanguard newspaper. And um, the Vanguard is leading with a story on Forex, saying Forex scarcity sends the Naira tumbling to 9.30. Uh, I mean, well, I, I'm not sure what's happening, but I know that from my monitoring, it's been, it's been around 9.30 for more than three or four weeks. Uh, maybe they just tumbled out the information, as we saw also with the People's um, mm. Daily. Uh, moving on to other stories, 600 million trap funds enable direct CBN to meet foreign airlines. Nigeria accounts for 30% global malaria burden. That's, that's a worry. Mm. Uh, MTN raises concern over vandalism of site infrastructure in Southeast. Is this deliberate vandalism or this, this is an art career by scavengers? I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, because this will be self-inflicting. You're practically shutting yourself uh, out of contact with the world. Yeah. IGP declares killer of DPU. Paco in rivers wanted. I think and the, there, the governor also has also a ransom. placed a bounty yeah. on Yeah, a on bounty where you put yeah. on him. 100 days economic reforms have made life more difficult, financial experts. Um, to other stories, Abidjan, Lagos, Highway, Echo has moved to perfect design. They've been talking about this thing forever. What's, yeah. what's in this design that, that needs perfecting? It's uh, Echo has. Well, it's echo. You expect that to, to fit dragon to happen. That's true. Um, insecurity in Niger to reopen. 11 public schools closed. Niger, I mm. guess. Right. 11 public schools closed in 2021. Well, does it mean the security situation has improved with some of the things we have seen lately? Mm. Um, academic records. We, graduate, we graduated in Chicago University in 1979. Tinibu classmate speaks up. Finally. Uh, but there's another controversy. Mm. That the classmate is younger than his first daughter, uh, so the <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's 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 another thing. Uh, but basically, uh, the, the 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 lawyer or the counsel to the university is saying they are unable to verify mm. uh, that certificate, and, and mm. I think that's huge. Mm. All right, but it's it's sad that you it know is. this is how it is complicated the situation. Yeah, is. A ransom from kidnapping, foiling terrorism and banditry national counter-terrorism center has disclosed and on sports afcon 2023 nigeria set to face senegal egypt or ivory coast in same group and this uh, looks like the group of death i would senegal take senegal is a powerhouse i would take senegal egypt is also a powerhouse ivory yeah. coast will be hosting you don't want to go against the no host. no no that's why i, say I would take <laughs> senegal because i think yeah. their, their power is fading a little absolutely bit. that's it on the front page Finally, let's take a look at the front page of the Guardian newspaper for today. High prices push government homes beyond average Nigerians' reach. Interestingly, just two days ago, we had this conversation with the uh, representative of the Federal Mortgage Bank and uh, one of the developers uh, tied to the uh, National Housing Fund. And there's a breakdown of how it is almost impossible for Nigerians to afford, uh, you know, uh, housing in this country. Less than 1% of unemployed youths benefit from government's intervention. Uh, SCIID Panty 
how not to investigate deter criminals. 800 million naira stock funds. Federal government directs CBN to settle foreign airlines backlog. And six years after, Nigeria awards 49 gas flare sites to 42 investors. Kano suspends another Casco director for alleged palliative diversion. And the federal government moves NIMC to Ministry of Interior as issued NINs hit 102.4 million. So it's good. We're getting more and more data about the 200 million plus people we have in this country. Absolutely. Uh, let's say 50% of the job is done. That's uh, it. We still have a long way to go, though. All right. Um, I'm happy to announce to you that um, our analyst or reviewer is in the studio. Is no order that Marlon Nasser Lawal, the editor in chief, Deadline Newspaper. Remember, I promised you that whatever. I w he does. He will not escape that and could the next time. Mm. It does appear. <laughs> it does appear that my charm worked on him, yeah. and uh, we came out today <laughs> in the white and cold this morning. Yes. Welcome. I'm yeah. happy to get, good. see you back on the show again. Good, good uh, morning. Thank you after very much. after morning. a short break. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Good morning. Welcome. Um, the Daily Trust is leading with. Um, uh, before we come to the Daily Trust, I would like you to speak to the report on the return of. Uh, the NMIC to the Ministry of Interior. It used to be there, then we put it out to communication. We are not sure what exactly it was supposed to do in communication mm -hmm. because it's about identity management, and that's one of the biggest single sector everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, because once we can, we compromise on your identity, every other thing is flawed. Whether it is the tax system, <laughs> Yeah. Or it is, I mean, today we are talking about a certificate or mm. no certificate because we don't even have a social security mm. uh, number. People, mm. look at the case in Kano. Uh, the, the people are losing their election mm. bids on the grounds of forgery. You mm. can't even determine who is the exact person with a name and all of that. How huge, how, how relevant is this uh, movement back to the Interior Ministry? Well, I think it's very relevant, uh, even though we are yet to see uh, an official statement, uh, you know, as far as that is concerned, because I saw on the front page of Punch this morning that, uh, you know, it may, me, may be moved to the Interior Ministry, mm -hmm. which means probably the nation and the number of uh, other papers uh, were able to source the story from, mm. uh, you know, and they confirmed to the sources. Daily Trust, mm. uh, mm. the NMIC confirmed that okay. they have which is which mm. is very good. Mm. Uh, like you said, uh, it's very important that we have, you know, all these things, uh, you know, being handled by one single mm. entity because mm. uh, we are still complaining of uh, not having, you know, some 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 of the agencies not having access to uh, the database of, uh, you mm. know, uh, mm. other agencies like. We now have so many uh, agencies that are dealing with biometric yeah. uh, data of Nigerians. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we can harmonize all these things and uh, for one entity to be able to handle it, I think it will be better for the country. I mean, I mean it's a no-brainer, really, to say that this should, from the, from the get-go, it was set up, it was established under the Ministry of Interior. Do you, do you understand the political motivations for moving some of these agencies uh, from point A to point B. I mean, recently when the Tinubu administration came to power, it also moved back some of those ministries back under the leadership or supervision of the vice president, for instance. What, what does that say about the system itself when it is easily um, flexible for people in power to actually move some of these pieces around? Because we never know. The next president could decide, oh, it should be under the Ministry of Defense. Uh, and then that, that would likely happen also. <laughs> right. Well, I think uh, uh, partly it has to do with some level of ignorance, actually, because if you are talking about uh, identity management, honestly, it should go to the immigration, the mm. interior, and what have you. Mm. But because, you know, uh, we have to use computers, we have to use technology to do some of these things, then somebody thinks maybe it's better handled by communications, the Ministry of Communications digital. and what have you. And this is one of the uh, problems I find with, you know, even the designations of some of the uh, ministries introduced by the current administration. Mm. You know, you have so many of them dealing with economy, economy. So before you know it, there may be some overlap. clash, some mm. overlap, you know, because somebody will think, okay, uh, my, my territory is actually being encroached upon and 
things mm. like that. So it's better you uh, take distance to, to the, the relevant agencies that are in a better position to actually handle them. Mm. And, and, you know, in, in following up with what you have said, I hope that it is not just about the agency moving. We, what Nigerians are yearned for, it's, it's a harmonized process in a sense. Mm. You, you want to do driver's license, you yeah. go through all that biometric capturing, you want to register a SIM, you yeah. start another biometric capturing, it is time for elections, and a fresh biometric capturing is done. You have your biometrics scattered. All over the I, I hope we get to a point where there is interoperability uh, of, of this platform such that once you have captured by the Interior Ministry, whether for a national identity or an international pass, all you do to do is to demand from those agencies to be issued. And they, you, you give your number, and, and that process is, and is I think, and that I think, information is instructed yeah. rather than put people through. And I think the NIN is now taking center stage for the number one information that they require. I mean, whether, whatever it is that you're doing, they want to get your NIN and the biometrics from that information is the yeah. one that usually take precedence mm. over all of these things, except if you have like a code of it that, and then it requires you to go back and then fix your NIN. So mm. I think uh, we're getting there. Uh, we hope so. And, and back to the Daily Trust now, where it is um, looking at development in the railway sector. Um, I mean, I, I don't know how you felt when you saw that that um, blue line in Lagos and, and the way people felt riding on them. And I, I know what the distance is between Marina and Mile 2, and, and, but it was the fastest means because it doesn't have these multiple stops, yeah. plus uh, the holdups you have because of the uh, congestions you find around Lagos. And today we are, uh, which other state was that? Okay, mm. uh, Anambra was Anambra also discussing, just, you know, discussing opening its own process, plan, yeah. yes, to a Canadian firm and all of that. And the Daily Trust decided to chronicle what, what this would mean for the entire country. 16 trillion is what is between us and um, a real system that practically will cover a better part, um, um, part of this country. How do we go about actualizing this? Because clearly, going by budgetary, uh, allocations, there is no way we can fund something like this from our budget cycle. Well, uh, even the one you mentioned in Lagos, you know, I uh, you know we are taking some loans to be able to uh, get them running. Uh, so if we are able to, if we are not able to do that because the, 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 current, the, the country currently is broke, we all know that, and uh, we don't have the money, even the ones that we are uh, having in operations are actually uh, based on loans that we collected from China and uh, other mm -hmm. uh, lending uh, institutions. But if we are able to, like you said, you know, uh, get some private entities to enter into it so that they can maybe build, operate, and then transfer at a point uh, later uh, in, the in the future, possibly we'll, uh, you know, uh, have a robust uh, transportation system. Maybe we are still focusing our attention on the uh, standard gauge and uh, what have you. But uh, even the narrow gauge, if we are able to do it, because right now there are so many countries that are still uh, the operating the, the, the narrow gauge, even in uh, Australia, South mm. Africa, Pakistan, India, so many of them. And they are making the most out of it. Mm. So if we are able to, in fact, I remember the former Minister of Transportation, Amechi, uh, saying that uh, the difference between the narrow gauge and the standard gauge is, is just less than 20 or so minutes, mm. that by the time uh, you arrive at your destination using the standard gauge, you know, some 20 minutes or so after, uh, mm -hmm. whoever is also riding on the narrow gauge will be able to also cover the same distance. So mm. if we are able to focus our attention to the ones that we can do, mm. and I'm happy that uh, in the Constitution, it's no longer on the exclusive uh, mm. list. Mm -hmm. States can even, you know, key into mm. it, see how they can uh, be able to, to mm. benefit from the system. Because even Kaduna State, uh, yeah. I remember the yes. governor mentioning okay. not long ago mm. uh, that uh, from Kafanchan to the capital and then from Zaria, mm. uh, he wants to get even that Even the one that runs again. from Sabo to Rigachukun was, was, was yeah. a bit helpful yeah. at the time. Yes, when uh, then governor Nama Nama uh, December, yes. I wrote that a number of I times. Remember so many, <laughs> it was a saving grace yeah. for me. And yeah. so many people were actually even, you know, riding on the train yes. just to to move yeah. you know, yeah, just to right. feel, yeah. you know, uh, to get and, a feel. And of do you it. think this is this is this is you know this is a low hanging fruit for this administration to double down on what uh, the Buhari administration has been able to do to also add value to what the Gulag administration achieved in fast tracking 
the uh, rail transportation in this country because it does appear like you know the alternative to the you know issue around our transportation system in this country yeah i think i think they should uh, take advantage of that because you know our roads can can cannot be able to do all the things that we expect them to do uh, mm. if we want them to last long if because right now nobody even knows the actual weight of all the vehicles you see moving about uh, like all these uh, haulage uh, trucks mm. you know who knows exactly the weight that they carry yeah, nobody exactly. knows uh, because we don't have weighing bridges in nigeria and uh, so the roads are the ones that are actually suffering uh, for, for for it but if we are able to get uh, the railways to do some of the the, the movements that we mm. see happening on our roads the government will certainly benefit and even our roads will uh, last longer. Yeah. All right, um, that's the match we will take with uh, Mala Nasri in the studio this morning as we approach the top of the I want to thank you very much for finding time to come. Um, if you have heard uh, to avoid me next time, I'm sure you would um, clash with, uh, <laughs> with Abdul on the Anku calendar. Thank Maybe you very I'll much. Maybe coming with some spare clothes. Perhaps. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps. All right. Um, we will take a short breather. When we return, the show continues. Please don't go away.